Hey, we're having a dinner party to celebrate. <laughs> well, it's kind of a neat story what we're celebrating, so why don't I tell you about it? It started yesterday. We're at Vito's, and he was especially happy. <laughs> ah, one of Vito's special for my favorite customers. You seem overjoyed today, uh, Vito. Oh, I am. You know the great food critic, Eddie Gourmand? Well, on his show today, he is going to give me another great review. <gasps> it is a time. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, ooh. <sighs> today, I'm going to tell you about a place called Vito's Pizzeria. You listen to this man. He knows. It stinks. <laughs> Crap, disgusting pizza. The crust tastes like... Mm, Paper. Yeah, a paper plate, only burnt. And don't get me started on that miserable excuse for cheese. Uh -huh. It tastes like mud, but with less flavor. Also, <laughs> I think the pepperoni is rented. I am ruined. You're not ruined, Vito. You're still a great chef. Hey, how about making my cat ten lasagnas? Whoa. I shall never make lasagna again. The thing was, Eddie Gourmand wasn't just insulting Vito's fine cuisine. He was cranky about everything. That new hamburger stand on 7th Street. It stinks, too. In fact, all hamburger stands stink, and so does 7th Street. And the entire west side of town, and this show, and that ugly shirt my stage manager is wearing. It stinks. I quit. Whoa. What got into Eddie? That's what we wanted to know. He'll be so glad to see us. What do you want? I don't care what you want. Did you bring me anything? No. Well, then, just leave me alone. Don't you think that was kind of odd? Not really. It's uh, my standard greeting for normal. It turns out we'd interrupted a call from Eddie's boss. All right, all right, if you insist, I'll go to this doctor, you know. Hey, I need you to drive me to see this doctor and step on it. Am I ever that annoying, Odie? Don't answer that. So John drove Eddie to this doctor and we waited outside. Tell me, Mr. Gourmand, why are you so hostile lately? Hostile? What idiot said I was hostile? And by the way, this couch is uncomfortable and it's ugly and it's... Ah. Excuse me one moment, please. Who picked out these drapes? Something is bothering your friend, but I can't get him to tell me what it is. Isn't there anything you can do? He's usually not like this. There's one thing I can try. It's a new invention that lets us get inside the patient's brain. <gasps> Don't worry, boy. No one would ever get inside your brain. First of all, they'd have to find it. They waited until Eddie took his afternoon nap. Then they wheeled him into a lab and put this device on his head. Let me see if I have this straight. This machine lets you actually crawl into his memory? Well, not actually into it. I'm too large to fit down the psychic tunnel. It opens into the mind. If I were smaller, I could get down there. I'll just have to peek. <laughs> We'll go back into his memory and see what it is that's troubling him so. The psychic tunnel is opening. And this cat's going in for a close-up look. It felt kind of weird going through Eddie's mind, like falling into beef stroganoff without the noodles. And suddenly, there I was in his past. <laughs> I wonder which one of these kids is Eddie. Show me the ball, someone! Hurry! Yahoo! And there's my answer. 
He seems to be a most unusual child. When I grow up, I want to be a fireman. When I grow up, I want to be a nationally famous food critic. He seemed to be off to a good start. The tuna noodle casserole was a bit overcooked, and the carrots had a touch too much salt. But the tapioca pudding gets four stars. How did he learn so much about food? Hmm. More supper, Mom! More supper! Oh, that's how. Here, Eddie, dear! The roast turkey is done just the way you like it! Oh, the giblets are spectacular! Did you make your fabulous stuffing? Of course I made my fat! Oh, and my award-winning biscuits that make your taste buds tingle! <laughs> oh, you're the best son in the world! <laughs> you are the best mother in the universe! This conversation is almost enough to kill your appetite. Hey, kitty! I don't know where you came from, but would you like to join me? There's plenty! <laughs> <laughs> Notice I said... almost? <laughs> You're right! It's Garfield! Garfield! What are you doing inside Eddie's memory? You come out of there right now! No, I like it in here. <laughs> <laughs> More of your creamy, delicious mashed potatoes, Mommy. <laughs> oh, Eddie, dear. Hmm? Do, do you really think you should eat quite that much? They're so high in calories. <laughs> you won't give me everything I want? <laughs> you don't love me! <laughs> I'll get your mashed potatoes right away! <laughs> oh, here you are! <laughs> oh, Mommy loves you! Oh, oh, and you'll want your gravy, too, won't you? <laughs> Suddenly, I found myself in a gale force gravy storm, pelted with little pieces of giblet. It blasted me clean out of Eddie's memory. We seem to have tapped into a deep, painful memory for Mr. Gourmand. Why won't you feed me, Mommy? Don't you love your little Eddie? And there's the problem right there. He has some sort of problem with his mother not letting him eat whatever he wants? Apparently, that would appear to be what's making him so cranky. <laughs> I didn't quite understand it either, but I knew what we had to do. Find Eddie's mother. Even John figured that out. We searched and finally, we located her. Ah, uh, Mama Gourmand's health food store? Hey. Eddie's mother had a little shop over on 7th Avenue. I haven't seen my son in a couple of years. Does he still weigh as much as a small truck? A medium-sized one. What happened between the two of you? He called up and asked me to make him all his favorite foods for dinner. I said, sure, but I wasn't going to stuff him full of calories. I said I was going to feed him a healthy diet, and he screamed, you don't love me, and he hung up. As always, it was up to the wise cat to figure out what to do, and I did. <laughs> At the TV station, Eddie was getting ready to do his show. Good to have you back, Eddie. Ah, who cares what you think? And why are you still wearing that ugly shirt? There's someone here to see you. I have a show to do. I don't want to see anyone. Mama! What are you doing here? You came to apologize and to say you'll cook me all my favorite foods? I'll make you dinner, but I won't help you shorten your life by putting on weight. I want to keep you around as long as possible. I used to think giving you everything you wanted was a way to say, I love you. This is a much better way. <sighs> well, that 
that kind of ends our story. Eddie got back to being Eddie, and he gave Vito a good review. And for the best pizza in the world, go to Vito's. Just don't eat too much of it. I am back in the business. Uh, this must be because of Mr. Arbuckle and his cat. I shall take them a feast. In fact, he should be here any minute with it. <laughs> hey. Oh, Mama Gourmet is cooking dinner for all of us, including Eddie. Something healthy, she says. That's why I'm glad Beto's delivering food. <laughs> My way of saying a thank you. And a fine way it is. I'll take those, Garfield. These are not on your diet. Just remember, it's for your own good. Okay, I'll try to remember that, but it's not gonna be easy. <laughs> <laughs>